I am Lorena and I am in charge of product at Metapool and today I will be talking about MetaGild. Uh, first, the why. Why we need a uh, MetaGild launchpad. First, and this was very interesting for me today when I was listening to, to the round table, they mentioned the, that we need or that projects need different ways to get funding. So yeah, I agree with that. And with the with the way we do it with the launch path, we provide with that, with a different way to get funding. Then we know that for Web3, it's very important. The community is the center. The community is very important. So with um, the Metal Geo's launch path, we give communities a way to back projects they trust, even if they don't have a lot of funds individually. And also investors need to be sure the projects they consider for investing are strong. And we provide this with, um, I mean, we try to assure this uh, with, with um, um, sorry, I'm for, forgetting the words, um, with, with a way for evaluating every project we get into the launch path. So that's the beginning. So right now, what is what we are doing? Uh, what we do at MetaGill Launchpad is, or we are a lossless crowdfunding platform for projects on near that want to get funded by their, by their community. Uh, something that we use, uh, we leverage staking by providing providing backers with the possibility of funding with their rewards, not their main assets. So with this, as you know, I'm part of, uh, or Meta, MetaGill Launchpad is part of the product suite for Metapool. And Metapool, it's a liquid staking solution. So in, in some ways, we are giving utility to that stake of tokens uh, that, that the users get when they use Metapool. And yeah, this is a word. We have a due diligence process to select every project that we get into the launch path. So first, how can a project get into the launch path? They, we have an open call for projects and they can apply. We evaluate them. We use the same rules to evaluate every project. If they get selected, they can start a campaign. And if they don't get selected, we usually provide feedback so they can improve and try again. Uh, because we know that sometimes uh, teams are not yet in the like in the right moment, but they if they continue building, we, we encourage them to come back. So how projects are selected? We want to give the users and potential investors quality projects. Every project um, that wants to be considered as a candidate must fulfill uh, different requirements. The first one is a solid team. And by a solid team, what we mean is we, we look for diversified teams that it's not only, uh, for example, the, that it's not only developers, that they have someone that it's in charge of, for example, marketing, or if it's uh, a music project that they have someone that it's in charge of, uh, or, or that has some kind of experience with that environment. Uh, so we, we look for solid teams. We look for strong communities because uh, as I mentioned before, the people that it's going to be backing the projects is the community. So we we need the, these projects to have a, like a community that is that has a, a size, a, um, like a medium to big size, very that they interact a lot with them, that they uh, get feedback from them, that they listen to them, that they are constantly in constant communication with them. We need them to have a token and it's tokenomics. As you know, I think that I, I don't need to be very specific uh, about this with this audience. As you know, uh, tokenomics is a way to tell your backers and your investors how are they going to be benefited uh, with the rewards they get because uh, the projects give these tokens to to the people that it's backing them so uh, we we need for the team to be clear on how uh, their backers are going to be able to use their token 
uh, a plan for the funding because we know that in web web3 everything is changing all the time but at least you have to be clear on what you want to build and how you want to build it um with the amount of money that you're raising and something else that it's important for us is our relation with the new york system and that means uh we we want the people that we get into the launch pad to 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 be connected already with the new york system maybe that they have uh one of the certificates uh for for education that that um, it exists in the platform or that they have uh, had another grants previously from um, someone else in the ecosystem. Uh, what we are looking to get uh, by doing this is projects that are um, that we can trust that they will be building and that they won't be dropping their projects in the long, in, in the short term so how it works for the people that it's backing first they they go to metapool and it takes some near to get st near they go to meta guild and select the project they want to back and they lock their st near then for a period for a locking period the project will get the support and the user will get a ious uh the the user will get an iou for their locked estineer and another one for the project tokens and then with this a, it starts a cycle because you you can make your iou's liquid so you can either wait for the locking period to end uh to claim your tokens or you can create a bond via meta bonds that i will be describing in in a few minutes and put it into the market so that is how it works for backers so how managed launchpad support near projects on top of giving them the platform to raise these funds that they need we work with them um we share a lot of the experience we have with them as you know metapool has launched uh different products into the web3 ecosystem and we already have um like a community that it's engaged with us and that is constantly um i mean like yeah interacting with with us so something that we do for every project that we get into the launch path it's a pre-launch campaign maybe some of you are familiar with the amas that we usually do with the with the teams we create um like different content uh, for twitter we we make uh, also um infographics or graphics explaining what the teams are about uh, or what the projects are about we um we we do a lot of promotional little things around the launch we publish blogs blog posts we do uh like we have done video we have done as i mentioned infographics we and then we do ongoing promotion during the crowdfunding campaign uh, it's something that we know uh, that we have done at um uh, metapool and that we try to do with every project as you know something that it's um an area that a lot of the projects in web3 need help it's precisely that marketing so we are trying to uh we, we try to be with the teams and accompany them into how to communicate their campaign how to uh, explain their users how how they can support them and also we work with different entities from the new york system that are interested in supporting new projects on near so as you know we have a partnership um in the past with proximity or with human guild so they can support these projects via the uh, the launch path so as I mentioned before, this could be like a cycle, a, an entire cycle for people that want to um, support projects, but at the same time, when uh, like in some way keep their liquidity. So we um, 
we created Metabonds a few months ago. Uh, this is a marketplace where users that have participated in Metagil's Launchpad uh, can still, uh, and that they have um, assets that are locked, can create listings and, and exchange these bonds, bonds with, with other users. Uh, they can use the bonds that they can that, that they get from MetaGild, and they can access liquidity from from these bonds. And yeah, the bond sellers are able to access their initial capital earlier. Uh, another thing that I uh, I forgot to include in here is that this option of creating bonds it's also open for the projects that we have had at the at the launch path so these provide the projects the the opportunity to create bonds and then uh have a control way for um market their their tokens so i want to share with you some of the numbers that we have had with the with the launch path we launched on Mainnet on July last year, and since then we have launched five campaigns and one, one more is ongoing at the moment. We have had 158 backers and more than 450,000 uh, estineer has been locked for supporting these teams. Uh, in terms of marketing, we have hosted 7 a.m. 7 AMAs, publish more than 100 tweets and create more than six posts uh, on our blog about the projects and their results. Uh, also, something else that it's important is that recently, for example, we we got uh, some new bonds from, from Pembroke and, and they are starting to use that option to continue this cycle of um, like creating liquidity for their projects via our products. So yeah, the plans and why we are here and we want to um, get, we want you to get familiar with what we are doing and and get engaged with the, with the product. Uh, we have collected feedback from the projects and their communities, and we are working on some improvements. First, and, and in here, I have to tell you, I come from a Web2 background, and I, like, I've like i been working for a few years on products. So one of the first uh, priorities that I have is improving usability for both the projects and the backers. Uh, then provide creators with resources to help them be prepared for the launch path. In these terms, we are working with people that um, is helping creators, creators with the first steps of their projects, like how to, like how to start uh, building in Web3. So we are working with them so we can guide them into, so, so they can in some way educate these projects to, to have everything that it's needed to be ready for the launch path. We are documenting the learnings to create a marketing playbook for projects with a campaign. This is uh, something that we, we think that it could be uh, a very good um content are a very good tool for for projects that we have we will have in the future and we are creating marketing efforts that give visibility to the current and past projects and we we are in contact with all of the projects that have been um part of the launch path and and we are trying to see how how everything that they have learned while they they've been building their projects could be in some way presented to to the whole ecosystem and to people that it's building so in some way we can um learn from each other and collaborate with the the ecosystem so everyone can be like learning about the others and this is it this is Medagil. Thank you for listening to Thank me. Thank you. Thank you. So I uh, just want to mention that that's a masterfully put uh, presentation. Uh, my my 
congratulations on that. And uh, I think I have just one thing to say. I know that Metapool has been basically uh, one of the main pillars of near ecosystem. And it's great to see that you guys are not uh, just being inert. You are actually evolving. You are actually branching out. It's great to see projects not just, uh, you know, standing around and uh, waiting for things to happen. They actually develop, they actually build, and they actually trying to make a difference in the ecosystem. And uh, I always have been, you know, um, inspired by Metapool specifically because you guys know uh, where to where to put your resources in so that it benefits the whole ecosystem and not only you specifically. So I think that's something that we all need to learn to do. We all need to share uh, the, you know, the fruits of our labor with the whole ecosystem. That sounds like some communism, uh, communist speech, but don't get me wrong. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Okaya has prepared a couple of questions in regards to that. To, to Meta Yield specifically, and uh, Okaya, please. Definitely. Hi, Lorena. Thanks for sharing your yeah blast of a pitch. It was amazing, truly. And uh, let me see what uh, questions I wrote down. A moment. Yeah. So, how does Meta Yield launch but further fundamental innovation and application in the fundraising space? Can you repeat the question? Sorry, I, I you got cut a little bit at the beginning. Oh yeah, of course. So how does Meta Yield Launchpad further fundamental innovation and application in the fundraising space? I mean, um, how we like for me a way of innovation. Uh, it's the, what I mentioned about usability. So something that we are doing right now, it's try to see how can we, I mean, right now we are, we are getting one project at the time on the, on the launch pad, because uh, we, we need to do a lot of things in terms of operation, like background operation. So something that I, I'm trying to do is uh, bring usability to the platform so we can support more projects and and help more projects i think that another thing that we are doing to like to be innovative uh, i mean it's being innovative but at the same time it's really being more um how to say it like uh like to put everything together it's giving all of these tools to to the to the project so they can um shorten the learning curve on what they have to do in order to be ready to fundraise and in order to be like ready to to build in in the next in the next level so i would say that um yeah it's that Sounds great. It's a unique and noble cause to accelerate uh, builders. I love it. Thank you so much. And what are the benefits for Web3 startups of using Meta Youth's platform? I I see many benefits. One, um, something that we have experienced with the teams that we have had in the platform is that sometimes they they have people that want to invest in them but they like i don't know like they are looking for a for for a way to invest in them with that that implies less um less risk or or not giving everything in so since we work with the rewards i i think that it's one of the benefits also because you this is a web3 platform and you you are familiar with um i mean it, like it's a great way to onboard uh people from your community to the web tree and then you if you are i mean you will be also a web tree project so you will have all of your community already um onboarded we usually work with with projects that are um like 
almost going to main it or, or that are starting to in, in main it. So this is a way, a, a great way to onboard the, your community. And also with all of the information that we have on chain about the people that it's backing you, it's a great way for um, projects to, to reward their community because uh, they, they know who is backing them up. They know who is uh, like how much, yeah, how much everyone it's, it's uh, giving to the campaign so they can reward them uh, like through the platform. So that, that, those are some of the benefits. Lovely, thanks for clarifying. Then I have one more question from my end. Uh, how do stakers benefit from meta yield rewards? Can you tell me a little bit more of the process? Oh yeah, uh, the like the the people that love they are asking here to back up the the teams or to back up the project. Sorry, they they will receive uh, tokens from the project in exchange for their rewards. So, for example, right now we we have the the jump DeFi campaign ongoing. So, if I go and I lock my estineer and back them up with I don't know like 10, 10 estineer, then I will receive jump tokens in exchange. I think that for every estineer they are giving like three point four or three point six. I don't remember exactly. Um, meta tokens for your rewards so and and that will happen at the end of the locking period uh so after the six months of locking period that uh, we have with this campaign you you won't get rewards for that time but at the end of that locking period you will start getting uh, jump tokens and it's usually uh, at a lower valuation that the, the one that they have up in, in in the market so it's it's like if you were uh like uh, a bc a, a, like an, a big investor but you you don't need a big amount of money you 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 are uh, accessing this price for their tokens only for for being part of the um, campaign in the launchpad amazing it makes uh, the platform very accessible to many that's very nice if you don't mind i see matthias one of our community has a question can i share it with you yeah yeah sure ah uh, lovely so uh let's see what are the main KPI OKKRS. Uh, excuse me, uh, I'm not familiar with these terms. KPI uh, is no KR. I I'm reading it in. Oh, lovely! <laughs> Please, yeah. if you could take over. <laughs> I I personally know only KPI, K, KPI so uh, don't worry, Okaya. I will soon. Yeah, yeah, I, I it's very similar, really. Uh, and as I mentioned, what we evaluated, I I. I explained it very quickly, but something that it's very important when I when I get applications, one of the first things that I see is the the size of the community. So we don't have a fixed size, but something that we do with every project that we evaluate is check the size, but also the level of interaction that the that the a project has with their community because you you can have i don't know like three million people on your community but if you say something and nobody is replying that that then that means that probably it's all bots or that you are not really connected with that people so we we measure that we measure the size and the level of interaction we measure also like how how like how much feedback you get from them. Uh, this is easy. For example, if you go to the Discord on for for Jump DeFi, you can you can see there that they get a lot of feedback from their community and that they are constantly telling their community what they are doing. So this is one of the reasons why we selected them. For example, um, so that that part is important. The community. Then another thing that I also mentioned, but I can detail a little bit more, is uh, the the team. 
for example, we we had a a project uh, that requested to be on the launch pad that was uh, a, like a game. And and some one of the reasons why we selected that game is because you when when I check their documentation, uh, you have not only developers with experience on gaming, but also people that worked in on the gaming industry before, and people that work uh, on on marketing specifically for gaming. So that tells you that this this uh, team is well balanced and that they will be able not only um they will be able not only to be keep building their project but, but also to push the the campaign that they will have the capacity to push the campaign so that that it's uh that it's another one and yeah the i i am missing oh yeah the token and the tokenomics the the token and the tokenomics is important because as i said before it's basically telling your investors this is how you will be using the the, the thing that i that i'm giving you in return for your investment and this is how i am thinking of uh the token to to increase their value and and this is how it, it will be used uh, within the application so that it's something that it's also needed we we usually check first that they have the token and second that the token has some some way of um of or that they have some plans for the token to be usable and to increase their value so that that it's another one um yeah I, I, to be honest the one that it's more difficult sometimes is the the connection with the with the ecosystem some people is um very new to to near so sometimes we we have to help help them with that but uh yeah the rest i think that i already mentioned uh everything i don't know i don't know if i'm missing something but yeah um what what we are looking uh what what we are trying to avoid by doing all of these almost background checking on on every project that we get into the launch pad is to avoid projects that maybe only are are only looking for the funds and then they disappear we we try to i mean you know like we do our best to to get projects that are strong and that will keep building for for a long time yeah uh it makes sense yeah and uh yeah I think you answered pretty uh, in depth, uh, and uh, I don't think anyone has any questions left. Uh, and uh, again, very uh, well put uh, presentation. Uh, I have nothing to add, and every question that I had along the way was basically answered uh, in the presentation itself. That's folks. That's how you do presentations. <laughs> so you are. Uh,